How to speak meaningful words. Spoken words play an important role in the Christian life. If a person claims to be religious or spiritual, but does not know how to control their tongue, their spirituality is false. James 1 verse 26. There are two Greek words translated as word in the New Testament. The first is logos which means the living word, the source of all ideas, words and creation, the life principle. The second is rima which means the spoken word. Can I have your attention for a few seconds? Before we delve deep into this video, please help us spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ by supporting our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash You will instantly gain access to over 180 Christian videos and over 400 videos about billionaire biographies and over 140 personal development videos and over 450 verse and quotes images among other goodies. If you are watching this video and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I'll help you do that right now because it is for this very purpose that we create these videos. Giving your life to the Lord is the best decision you can ever make in your entire life on earth. I invite you to make Jesus your Lord today. In Romans 10 verse 9 the Bible says that, If thou confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Please, pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died on the cross, and that on the third day God raised him from the dead. I believe that Jesus is the Lord of my life from this day onward. I'm now born again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well done for making this prayer. You are now born again. Attend a Bible-based church and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and support us on Patreon to keep learning the truth of God's word as you become an excellent Christian every day. Our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash Link is also in the description. Let's continue with our today's topic, understanding logos and rima. Logos, for the understanding of the Christian, can be taken as all the total wisdom of God inclusive of that which he has revealed to man in the written word, the Bible. Therefore, the written word can be taken as a compilation of his revealed logos to man. Rima has always meant the spoken word, and for our study we will take it as meaning this. Many Christians have a vague idea of the difference and relationship between the two words logos and rima. Some Christian books and teaching have separated the identity of the Logos and Rima that Christians don't realize the relationship and link between both. Rima is a part of Logos revealed and manifested to a specific person for a specific purpose and a specific time. It applies directly to the person who receives the Rima and indirectly as an example and teaching to others. The Bible contains Logos, but at one time all the Logos in the Bible was Rima to the people in the Bible. The Rima comes from the Logos, and a compilation of all the Rima is the Logos. One way we can illustrate this is by the analogy of the human body. The whole human body represents the logos, and the individual cells represent the rima. Each of the individual and microscopic cells have a specific function in a specific position and they live for a specific time. The whole body actually consists of billions of cells. Sometimes in the Bible the word s logos and rima have been used interchangeably. In the book of Acts chapter 10, Luke the author, records that while Peter was speaking these rima, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the logos. Both these words were translated words in the English Bible. The two words Logos and Rima have been used to refer to the same sermon which Peter preached. All promises in God's word are Rima. There are miracles in the Bible like parting the Red Sea, stopping the sun and moon and walking on water which are records of how men of God heard a Rima for themselves and wrought such great miracles. Those miracles are not Rima to us. Therefore, if anyone wants to do such miracles, they need to hear a Rima for themselves. However, there are some promises in the Bible that are clear-cut Rima to all who read the Bible. Scriptures like whoever believes in him if anyone is sick or he, who believes in me are all Rima to as many as come across those scriptures, John 3 verse 16, James 5 verse 14, John 14 verse 12. We do not need to ask God whether it is his will for us to be saved. His word tells us clearly his will, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. Some Christians equate walking on water with healing. They say that just as we need to hear from God before we can walk on water, we need to hear from God before we can be healed. They do not realize that walking on water is not a promise, but healing is a promise. The two scriptures do not stand in the same category. Scriptures that are not classified as promises are records of the possibility of God working a miracle in a certain area, but to do them, we still need to hear a fresh rima and command from God. On the other hand, scriptures that are classified as promises, some conditional and some unconditional, are dependent on the conditions specified for each promise to be fulfilled. Those who say that claiming healing by faith through God's word is Christian humanism, advocate claiming salvation by faith through God's promises in the scriptures. To be consistent with their unsound theology, they might as well classify claiming salvation in Christ based on the scriptures as Christian humanism, because it is twisting God's arm to save us from our sins, based on what he promised in his word. The problem is not in, whether healing is God's remit to us, but rather in the art of meditation on God's word until the assurance or faith has dropped into our hearts. 
Many Christians act on God's word claiming healing by faith in the word without any assurance in their hearts. They do it, not because faith has risen in their hearts, but because they have seen others do it. God's word is merely information to their minds, but not revelation to their hearts yet. The definition of confession. The word confession comes from the Greek word homologos which literally means the same as logos. Therefore, confession is to say the same thing as the logos or God's word says about ourselves or our circumstances. I call this word confession. The operation of this principle is the operation of the same spirit of faith. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, and therefore I spoke we also believe and therefore speak, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. When the Israelite spies came back from the promised land, ten of them spoke words of defeat and discouragement. The Bible tells us that they gave a bad report, Numbers 13 verse 32. What they said was not in line with what God said and promised. Only Joshua and Caleb said they were able to overcome. It was also only Joshua and Caleb who entered the promised land. Before David ever threw a single stone at Goliath, he boldly said that he would give the flesh of Goliath and all the Philistines, to the birds of the air, and the beasts of the field, that all the earth may know, that there is a God in Israel, 1 Samuel 17 verse 46. He released a word confession, before he released a stone from his sling. The confession of our mouth works for or against us, positive or negative. When Jacob unknowingly said that whoever has Laban's false gods should not live, Rachel, who had taken the idols, subsequently died, Genesis 31 verse 32, Genesis 35 verse 16 to 19. Jesus said that we will be judged by every word that we speak, Matthew 12 verse 36, 37. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18 verse 21. The tongue has the power to control and rule the whole course of nature, James 3 verse 4 to 6. James, in his writings in chapter 3 of his epistle, compares the tongue to the bit in a horse's mouth, and the rudder of a ship. In modern analogy, the tongue would be equivalent to the steering wheel of a car. It is the steering wheel of a car that determines where the direction is. No matter how powerful the car is, the steering wheel still controls the direction of all its power. In like manner, the words we speak, will control the course and direction of our whole life. We should be careful what we say, and only say what is in line with the word of God. The importance of tongue control. In almost all his epistles, which give explicit instructions on the conduct of Christian life, Paul emphasizes the control and restraint of the tongue. In Romans, Paul exhorts to stay away from, and note those who cause division through their words, Romans 16 verse 17, 18. In 1 Corinthians, he exhorts the speaking of things that bring edification, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 26. In 2 Corinthians, he said that his written words were not for destruction but for edification, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 10. In Galatians, he tells the church not to bide and devour one another, Galatians 5 verse 15. In Ephesians, he tells us to let no corrupt word proceed out of our mouth, but only that which is good for edification, Ephesians 4 verse 29. In Philippians he tells us to meditate on things which have virtue, Philippians 4 verse 8. In Colossians, he tells us to do everything in word or deed in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father, Colossians 3 verse 17. In Thessalonians, he tells us not to be busybodies, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 11. In 1 Timothy, he tells us be an example to believers in word, 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Paul tells us not to consent to those who do not have wholesome words in line with the words of our Lord Jesus. He tells us to avoid profane and idle babble, 1 Timothy 6 verse 3, 20. In 2 Timothy, he tells us that a servant of God must be gentle and not be quarrelsome, 2 Timothy 2 verse 24. In Titus, he tells us to have sound speech, that cannot be condemned, and to avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions and strivings which are unprofitable and useless, Titus 2 verse 8, 3 verse 9. In Hebrews, he tells us that Jesus is the high priest of our confession, and therefore to hold fast to our confession, Hebrews 3 verse 1, Hebrews 4 verse 14, Hebrews 10 verse 21 to 23. Anyone who reads the epistles without seeing, that the Christian life involves the control of the tongue need s their eyes to be examined. The word of God leaves us no room to doubt, that it is a part and parcel of the normal Christian life, to speak the right words, that are in line with the word of God. Breathing the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as a person, is sensitive to the words that we speak. Notice how verse 30 in Ephesians chapter 4 is sandwiched between two verses which is reference to the tongue. Verses 25, 29 and 31 of the same chapter, emphasizes the control of the tongue. From this context, we can conclude that the grieving of the Holy Spirit has to do as much with our words as with our actions. Sometimes when a wrong word or conversation was indulged in by people in my presence, I have felt a grieving in the spirit. I did not realize it then, but subsequently in learning to walk closely with the person of the Holy Spirit, I have found him to be sensitive to a lot of things which we human beings are dull to. We can also see that, when the Holy Spirit takes control of a person, one of the first things that happens is that the person speaks forth in a new tongue. 
Since the tongue, according to the epistle of James, is the control center of our being, it would only be natural that the Holy Spirit would seek the control of our tongue when he fills us. The filling of the Holy Spirit will result in the control of our tongues to utter forth psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, Ephesians 5 verse 18, 19. The saturation of the word of God in our lives will also result in the same control, Colossians 3 verse 16. The faith confession. One of the obvious manifestations that we believe that God has heard our prayers is the way we converse about those things we have prayed about. Hearing the way some Christians talk about the things they prayed about sometimes gives us the picture that they do not believe that God has heard them. Their prayers seem to be just a religious exercise. God is real. He is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Some people find it difficult to confess what God's word says about their situation because they have not really believed in their heart. They need to take God's word until faith rises in their heart and then make the confession of faith. David could speak boldly against Goliath because he really believed that God would help him defeat Goliath. The faith confession is to believe in the heart first and then confess with the mouth. The problem why some confessions do not materialize is because while the mouth confessions are being made, the heart is in doubt. Please note that Mark 11 verse 24 is dependent on the quality of the heart not to doubt. You can have what you say if it is in line with the written word and if you do not doubt. Can you please do us a favor? If you have been blessed by this video, please leave a comment, like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, and invite at least 200 plus souls, it could be family and friends, to visit Discofeth YouTube channel, so that they may hear the gospel of our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and be born again. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and support us on Patreon. Our Patreon page is www.patreon.com slash Link is also in the description. Thank you and God bless you.